Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to everybody. We are coming tonight uh, to our regular Sunday uh, mega online course in an anesthesia webinar. Uh, tonight um, is uh, uh, episode 17 or 17 session in uh, 2021. Uh, I'm so proud to be in this position, uh, continuing our online uh, anesthesia medical education. And uh, tonight here, we have three guest speakers, and uh, we have our excellent distinguished moderator, Dr. Omar El Abbasi. Dr. Omar Abbasi is graduated from Cairo University, and he jumped across the river to get his master's degree from ancient university. Uh, then he went to uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, he worked there. He got his, uh, his DIAC uh, exam, European diploma, in intensive care and anesthesiology, and he moved, uh, he got his uh, membership and his fellowship of the College of the Anesthesiologists in Ireland, and uh, he was working as a consultant in Saudi Arabia, and then he moved to Ireland. Now he is a senior registrar in Bowman University Hospital, one of the biggest tertiary hospital referral center in Dublin, in Ireland. And I'm so proud to have my colleague tonight, Dr. Omar al as the distinguished moderator here. And uh, all the floor to you, Dr. Omar. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you very much, Dr. Saad, for this nice uh, presentation and uh, introduction for myself. Uh, I'm really proud to join the MEGA online courses. And uh, uh, I would like to, thanks, uh, to thank all the attendees uh, in this webinar tonight. and. Uh, for wherever you are. And I'm so delighted to introduce is Dr. Yasser Reda, uh, who is um, uh, interested in regional anesthesia and uh, uh, chronic pain management. He has really an inspiring uh, CV. I've, I've been through it. He's working <laughs> currently as a consultant, senior, senior consultant anesthetist in uh, uh, Hamad Corporation, uh, Medical Corporation in Qatar. Uh, he is the head of the intervention pain uh, medicine as well, and um, he has uh, many qualifications uh, starting from Egypt. Uh, he started his training in uh, National Cancer Institute uh, uh, affiliated with Cairo University, and uh, he got his Arab board uh, in Egypt as well, and he got the European Diploma of Anesthesia and the European Diploma of uh, uh, Regional Anesthesia and Acute Pain, the EDRA. Um, and the list is long here. He got also um, some of the qualifications from the United States, um, certification of intervention of pain sonography and uh, fellowship of intervention uh, of pain practice. Uh, welcome Dr. Yasser to this webinar. And um, you're speaking to us tonight about uh, the complications of regional anesthesia. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, giving us um, uh, your experience. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Omar. Bismillah, uh, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. And I, I want to thank uh, uh, the chance which bring me to be uh, with you as a speaker and to share our knowledge with you. Um, uh, also, special thank for the army behind this successful work by name, Dr. Saad and Mr. Dara Walish. Um, uh, the subject is very big as um, I, I, I speak before about to eat a camel in 30 minutes, but I will try to go to the target to be as simple as possible as, as I can, and to give you a barrel of wisdom in this subject. Uh, but uh, uh, my talk, it will be a little uh, shocking because uh, when we are fixed uh, uh, science about this topic, but uh, I will tell you about, uh, you know, that uh, not all the science is logic and not all the logic is science first. And most of the guideline is, uh, is done by the panel expert opinion uh, according to the available data, and this will change after some time. And the same data with another panel uh, expert can give you another guideline. Uh, why I, I'm just I'm speak about this? Uh, I want to speak about this subject because uh, in the last few years I found I, I, I meet a lot of complication from regional anesthesia, and uh, nothing without taxes. Nothing is taxes free. So if you do it. You be a taxes for that. How you to decrease your taxes to get a good training and to make your job according to the guidelines and to follow the available evidence which is available now. 
Um, I, I see in the last year, uh, look at the systemic toxicity, nerve injury, popliteal nerve injury, injecting in the nerve, and uh, vascular injury a few months ago, hemican axillary aneurysm, uh, infection of the catheter, visceral injury, someone injected in a set of a rectus abdominis, injected inside the tumor in the abdomen, and pneumothorax, and this happened with me uh, about uh, 15 years ago. So I don't have any conflict of interest about uh, my topic today. And this is my beautiful city uh, in the Mieta. This is the Nile, end of the Nile and Mediterranean Sea. And this ship, because my father also was a fisherman. My agenda to today, I will speak about introduction, ultrasound problems, because we think that ultrasound don't have a problems, complication of visual anesthesia, especially nerve injury and the vital organ injury, infection, <coughs> Because I have a lecture before about local and system toxicity, so I will speak. Uh, I give you a little brief about uh, uh, the, the barrel of wisdom for this issue, and conclusion and home message. Whatever you use, whatever you use, the general anesthesia, original anesthesia is is not matter. The matter is safety, and the matter what what, what you are mastering. This is a very important because you must predict the risk all the time, whatever regional or general, and because you believe with the shark and muscle predictor. Regional anesthesia is a very good issue. You can make an anesthesia in some cases, which you can't make a general anesthesia for him. The patient satisfied, even in this picture, the patient and uh, speak with the doctor and he's uh, awake, but he don't feel any pain and very good sober for analgesia. But all the time, not all the case running like this, you can get on some problems and some complication which make you to think about how to prevent this complication, how to solve it. And thanks for Dr. Saad, I get this picture from him. Just, I will not speak about the real anatomy, but I just put this picture to show what inside the nerve. All, all the time we think is a nerve like a cable. It's not like a cable. It's a life matters, it's a life issue. It's a life thing. So have a, a vein, artery, and have a nerve supply, lymphatic. So all the time thinking about that, when you enter the nerve, you can make a nerve, you can make an injury for the uh, vessels, you can make an injury for the nerve, and at the end, you can get a problem about the nerve injury. So also the other thing about the dif difference in anatomy, because many times when you go for the nerve, you have an important structure in your trajectory. Like this uh, branch, for example, when you go by the needle, you must avoid, this is a femoral nerve with, uh, with, uh, <coughs> which is yellow. And this is a, a branch of the nerve. Sorry, I'm getting uh, So you, you must choose your trajectory, not to make a nerve injury or vascular injury. Here also, this is sobraclavicular plexus, and you can see what is this structure, if you put a color dollar, it's pulsating structure, and this is an artery dorsal scapular or transverse cervical or uh, superficial cervical. And also this one is in, in uh, adductor canal. So you must look where, where you put your feet all the time or your needle all the time to avoid the nerve injury, to avoid vascular injury, to avoid complication of regional anesthesia. And this done by, uh, you know, I will tell you a good news about this. Uh, most of this complication happen, happen with juniors and with trainee. And with some people don't have a privilege to, to do the, the senior, but they don't have a privilege to do the regional anesthesia. But with training, I think this complication can be uh, 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 less and less, but still no one is immune. It can happen for anyone if you don't follow the guidelines and you don't do your job in perfect way. You can see in this picture, you know, that you can be lucky all the time, like the left one with, with a scroll and not doing anything, but you can be unlucky most of the time. And uh, this like an, an heel of the shoes can be puncture the tire. For me, I started as a volunteer and uh, I learn, I go to improve myself until become a faculty to speak in the conferences. And this happened for everyone. Don't start your job in a very easy way. You must get some learning. Don't look for internet and to do a blog because you can't be a pilot just to see the simulation to, to fly by, by, by a plane. This is the same like this. So we know that regional anesthesia improve outcome, efficiency, profit, and satisfaction. This is from a study. So what is the indication of regional anesthesia? Maybe anesthesia or analgesia to help with general anesthesia, balance, a part of balance about the modal analgesia, and a part of opioid free anesthesia, and part of major part of ERAS. And uh, you know that you can use it an addicted patient, and this is a, a valuable, a valuable uh, good uh, tools to, to use in the, for regional anesthesia. And also, if you have a contraindication for other method, many times you have many options, but sometimes you don't have except one option. What is the contraindication, you know, coagulopathy? Don't do it. Very existing neuropathy, 
anatomical aberrancy if you have a difference in anatomy of variation, pathology at the injected site or infection, like tumor or infection, lack of experience in the hospital facility. And this is the most important. If you don't have a facility, if you don't have uh, an experience, don't do it, especially, especially in uh, uh, an emergency time. So uh, about regional anesthesia and the anticoagulant, the MICA guidelines, uh, uh, ASRA and AAGBI, first guideline in 2007, which is improved after 2010 about neuroaxial uh, 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 block and the anticoagulant. Uh, also, uh, we have an UK guideline, which I like it because they make more details about the block. And the problem here, there is no evidence base about use this one. And they said in literature, there is no a major uh, uh, case of nerve of, of um, bleeding or hematoma, even with um, drug like antiplatelet drugs, because you can't make this a study because you can't try it's an ethical to do the study. So this come from the uh, opinion uh, of panel uh, expert, and this is what's called the list to have a low evidence. And uh, you know, I, I call uh, anticoagulant and peripheral nerve injury. Uh, sorry, deep plexus or peripheral nerve is the same, not applied. For example, if I make, for example, a superficial nerve, let's like the nerve side, and the patient anticoagulated, this is totally different when I make uh, 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 what's called the source compartmental block. And this is the talent of the British guideline or UK guidelines. He ranked the uh, uh, peripheral nerve block according to the expertise of the person of the doing it, the catheter or not a catheter, superficial or deep, and compressible or not. But all this, even this guidelines, I like it, is lack of randomized control study. What is the controversy about this region anesthesia? <clears throat> there is many questions to be answered. To make it awake or asleep, which is more bitter. We don't have a data. And there is a lot of conflict. There's a lot of study. Not, and most of the study is not showing that there is no difference. Especially we do that in pediatric and, and, uh, and all the time without complication. Uh, Baracesia, Early warning, and it is unreliable. You can make a paracesia many times in the spinal and don't have any nerve injury. And sometimes you don't have paracesia and they have a nerve injury. Also, paraplegia and arginacesia can be avoided. There is no data. How can you avoid it? Epidural versus uh, 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 spinal cord, the injury. There is no data when you make it for spinal or for epidural. Nerve injury can be prevented. No data how it can be prevented, but you can decrease the incidence. Also, local anesthesia systemic toxicity recognized early and awake, no data, which is more bitter to make it in uh, local regional anesthesia and awake or, or sleep. There is no data to, to prove or to reject one uh, uh, over the another. So what is the benefit of ultrasound? To see the structure, diagnosis abnormality, uh, to, to give less volume, in some study less complication, and the standard of care. And uh, you know the growing evidence about less complication is a very good because the, tra the training is improved and the machine is improved and everything is improved. So the function is like to see what's behind the door without opening and what's inside the air without digging. That's very important. Uh, you know that I just will just read for this uh, 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 an active review for, about regional anesthesia, about uh, uh, regional anesthesia and acute pain management. This is very, uh, this way of touching the heart to show how to, how to, to use this uh, regional anesthesia in practice. Uh, and the conclusion for this paper was advanced technique in the last decade improved the safety of regional anesthesia. We, and there is a lot of more data. Every year we found more data, uh, what's called to show uh, in the surface and to give you and improve the guideline. Safety need training and practice, very important. It decreased the complication, but it still happened. It still happened with even ultrasound, with nervous simulator, with improved training. Investment in ultrasound had to decrease this complication is a very good business to do in your hospital. And most of the time, if you don't have, if you, if you can't, found the best, if you can find the best, with no obstacles, it is probably doesn't lead to nowhere. So whatever you do in practice, whatever you got a complication. You remember this picture? This is the first picture about uh, the ring of Rittigan wives uh, when he make a first X-ray, and this is a picture. And uh, uh, my question, do you think is ultrasound is a safe tool, is a safe machine? Most of us say yes, because it compared to a, a, a C arm in some of um, <coughs> images. But I will be shocking to you. They stay a few years after they bring the X-ray and telling that there is no effect, harmful effect in human at all. Until they found many, many people working in radiology, uh, loss of his hair and get a skin burn and get a, a many, many problem and cancer from this radiation. So when you have it all, they don't know. You need a long time uh, 
uh, and uh, you need um, data and the uh, uh, randomized control study to show, and you need more, 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 more experience to see if it's safe or not. So I tell you a shocking uh, thing about the history. You know, in 1917, uh, uh, one of the science who when just subjected uh, the fish to our ultrasound, clinical ultrasound, the fish died. And again, some people just subjected to the frog for three to four seconds of our ultrasound, complete paralysis uh, happened to the frog, and after some time, they return back. And in electron microscope in animal study, he was subjected the nerve, isolated nerve to ultrasound, demyelination happened, and apoptosis for the cell happened. And some is uh, uh, what's called regenerated, and some is not. And But you can't tell me, uh, you can't tell me this is an animal study. We don't know it happened in, in human or not. We're just we're still waiting. And what is the factor affecting that? So the ultrasound has what's called thermal effect. And this temperature can be increased and can make a burn and can make a denaturation for the tissue, especially if you give an intensity of the beam and beam whites, exposure radiation, exposure time, very important, uh, character of the tissue and heat capacity of the structure and perfusion. If they have a good perfusion, the temperature will go lower down. So this effect, it can meet a hazardous effect, the diversity and hazardous effect for many structures in the body, like a lens, cornea, tendons, and the tissue. This is in clinical and in uh, 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 animal study. And also they have a mechanical effect. This mechanical effect can make a lung hemorrhage and lung destruction for the animal study because it's like a bombing, bombing of this structure from the uh, ultrasound. Even there is now what's called a focus ultrasound used instead of radiation for, to treat the cancer. So it can have an effect with bombing effect for this structure, but this is reflected to the human, we don't know up till now. Also, again, as I told you about my lens sheets at the structure, and the core temperature of the body can increase, and this is, can make a diversity in effect. Even teratogenicity, we don't know is have a teratogenicity for the baby or not. We don't have, no, have a data up till now. If you don't have a data, this not means that it will not happen. Also, uh, what's called when you make a just decavitation and uh, the temperature increase, an ultrasound wave increase the uh, uh, what's called bomb, bombard against the bubble. Bubble we can like this bottle when you open it, make it like the same like this in the tissue and can make a destruction. So here in this, uh, 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 they send about uh, to 79% of the regular ultrasound user in America to asking him about this mechanical index and uh, uh, thermal index. And no one knew what is this. Usually it is born four. So if you found double, you must move a little. You must don't use a, uh, what's called color doubler a long time because it's maybe hazardous. So all the time on all the machine you found MI, and TIS is called mechanical index and cerebral index. This is very important. If you make an ultrasound and increase double from the baseline, so take care. You must use more gel, you must move your group, and you don't use an, 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 uh, what's called a uh, uh, color double at that time. It may be hazardous for the patient. So biological effect of ultrasound, it's thermal, non-thermal, and non-thermal is mechanical and cav cavitation. And because of that, there is many, many uh, society about safety of ultrasound like European Committee of Medical Ultrasound Safety, British Medical Ultrasound Society, World for the Radiation for Ultrasound Medical Biology. Uh, we don't know in the future, it may be an, something risky. So there is a fact about uh, the nerve block. You must know that motor threshold is not reliable all the time, even without nerve problem. Intradural pressure, even not reliable. Sometimes you inject in high pressure, and patient don't have a problem. Sometimes inject in low pressure, and the have a problem. Uh, successful broke don't need all the time as it really did want to touch the nerve. You can make an away from the nerve about a few millimeters and it will. Don't touch the nerve. Uh, also, uh, in many cases, study, but this is an animal study for the isolated nerve in two, five, seven patients. Uh, 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 sorry, this is an wasn't real, sorry, not an animal study. They found that by ultrasound, 17% you have an internal injection what there is no uh, post-operative nerve injury. And there is now a running study about intradural injection. And I found a very interesting study about nerve root, injecting the nerve root about 64 patients, two male of local anesthesia with corticosteroid in chronic pain and no patient complained from any problems. So we have a complication, it can happen, it can be prevented, it can be treated. But a good anesthesiologist is not one who know how to overcome a difficult situation, but one who know how to avoid the difficult situation. Larv uh, said his uh, uh, was an uh, uh, as a uh, head, and this is a very important. But you know the first complication after the two case report came from Australia, 
with the, uh, about the wrong side block. For me, I, I make a three, a three side, a different three block um, in the uh, other side, but it was in pain and not facet block, but uh, I was lucky because two of the patients is wet, wet, but this is not the case all the time. And uh, it happened with me also that the surgeon told me this is a side and he don't make a mark, I make a block and after some time he come to see the patient, he found the other side. So I can't make a block for the other side and the mission was very critical, we canceled him. So all the time after the event, the ASRA and other society make a decision about to, to, to how to prevent it. And the make was called stop before block because long, wrong side block, it is a major error. You can go to the court uh, and it is uh, uh, what's called an incorrect check and uh, what's called uh, if you don't make a time in and you don't have a marking. So, uh, sorry, <clears throat> so the time, uh, I would just to verify everything, mission ID, maybe another mission, surgical consent, the mission consented or not, side mark, you must have a side mark to do it before, mission questioning about the block, about the case, and it's very important, and there is a verbal com confirmation, double check between you and the, your assistant. And this is a call to stop before you block, as I told you, and you have, must have a safety guideline to protect you, because if you don't do this, uh, 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 saying if you go to the court, you know that you claim this is not the best practice. If you don't do it, sometimes you can just go away from the guideline for the sake of the mission in individual cases. But the sales, this is the best practice. So I don't know. This is an uh, Trinity colleague, Labour Dublin. I think don't know too sad working there or not. But uh, they put a guideline. If you don't follow a guideline, you have a problem. And this man don't follow a full guideline. So the second complication, if you have a failed block. So the field block maybe the definition is, is bizarre, but it's not non-surgical block. You make an analgesia and you need anesthesia or to conversion for, to general anesthesia or to make a pain during surgery, which you need infiltration or to change the plan, local infiltration of the site or to change the plan. Uh, even if the patient, for example, you make a block and the patient needs six hours, you need to change the plan, this is some sort of failure block. Uh, speaking about the, the nerve injury, Needle trauma, it may be not coming from the anesthesia all the time, as we claim, you know. And the, the close claim in asset found 18% is anesthesia related, but it may be related for anything else. And it may be related to the trauma and, and advent injection for the nerve and high pressure inside the nerve to rupture the nerve. So <clears throat> internal injection, the patient feel a sharp pain, not necessary to happen. Surgical trauma also maybe uh, uh, cause a nerve damage like trauma and sharp bone or just a, a cast compression traction maybe uh, causing a trauma. And usually not manifested many times except after seven to 14 days. And even if you ask for a nerve conduction, it will ask you to see for three weeks at least. And symptom can persist and any nerve can be affected. And the treatment is the prevention, not just to, to treat. But you must remember that there is some controversy about that. Before ultrasound, you can't see it. You don't see anything before ultrasound. And in advent internal injection, okay, frequently, and no major sick will happen. So we don't know what's going on. So the type of nerve injury, it may be uh, similar, but uh, totally different in outcome. It's like traumatic, traumatic from the even related, from the trauma itself, uh, from combination, from uh, sharp bone, and the surgical related from traction, cast, uh, combination, tourniquet. And uh, it may be toxic for the uh, anesthesia, lesion anesthesia, or ischemic injury, which is the most, the worst injury. When you inject inside the nerve and to increase the pressure to affect in the blood supply. Toxic, usually traumatic, sorry, uh, toxic or uh, 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 combination or whatever can, for acts of six months, the outcome is good. But ischemic nerve injury is a, have a devastated, devastated complication. So as I told you, any, any fiber can be affected, what's very autonomic, motor, sensory. And how to decrease this as an example of interscaline block, how to decrease that ultrasound, it can be decreasing and there is a growing evidence about that. Neurostimulation can help more than uh, uh, landmark technique. Minimize the needle passage because even with Sterini, he puts the needle and return back, puts the needle and return back many times. So minimize the needle passage and we can what's called imagine a line from the, uh, 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 the needle to the target, don't to go and return back. You make an imaginary line and this is your trajectory. Uh, I was patient, but this is have a controversy because in many, like a pediatric, given uh, you can't make an awake and even movement of the patient can affect the outcome. Uh, needle uh, to nerve distance, you don't need all the time to go inside the nerve to inject. And also there is other, other thing about uh, uh, injection pressure monitoring. But all these animal studies, they found below 12 or 15 
uh, Pascal. Uh, this is not producing in, uh, nerve injury. 15 to 20 query nerve injury, but, but this is also an animal study and isolated nerve injury. We don't know what's it's happening in the uh, reality or not. So what about block procedure? You must educate the patient, the family about the block and how to protect the patient, how to, how to protect the limb. And monitoring is very important to discover early uh, local assessing to CC and other complications. To make a time out to prevent the wrong side or just a wrong patient. Uh, you know that to, we need and help all the time with uh, technology like ultrasound, nervous simulator. Monitor the patient uh, both the procedure because it can be progressive block or just it can patient get a problem from uh, a numb blame and uh, get a medical legal problem. Monitor the side effect and complication all the time. Again, assist neurovascular status of the limb, especially if the patient put a cast or tourniquet. Protect the limb from injury by a proper position, uh, head sli uh, neck sling, or just uh, uh, arm sling, or just to put in a special position on the pillow. And uh, to, to see how, what, which time the uh, block will be resolved to give him analgesia. And this is very important. This is the, the addressing or cast, because sometimes it happens under this cast, you don't see. Believe the limb in interior alignment and provide support all the time. Uh, again, uh, upper limb below, if you put the upper limb, full use of pillow support the leg and prevent the hill pressure. And also to care about the catheter, the position, fixation, checking for inf inf uh, infection, uh, uh, machine to give the local anesthesia, or just if you give it for uh, uh, check. And also check the delivery device all the time. What is the, about the uh, ASRA uh, guidelines suggesting more care about the patient with neurological insult? Uh, like diabetes mellitus, nervous simulation, if you make it for a hyperalgesia, give you high, high uh, voltage, high ampere. If you give it for uh, uh, the vision, not sensing, you give low. And you must care about this vision and more or less sensitive local anesthesia. But it is exaggerated in the literature. We don't have a data about that. But you know, sometimes you, if you don't have a data, uh, you just you, you depend on your experience. And uh, uh, what is ASRA adversary to decrease the risk of those people? Reduce the volume and concentration all the time. For example, if you make a competition for diabetes, I give uh, 0.225 lipovicane more than enough. Uh, uh, avoid vasoconstriction all the time because it can make an ischemic nerve injury. And uh, you know, local anesthesia, this uh, vasoconstrictor used during the time which is, we don't have uh, uh, what's called a long acting, but now we have a long acting, we have a safe additive. Uh, no data confirm it to reject in uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome and other demyelinating disease. So what about the needle? Which needle is better? The sharp one or blunt one? It will be shocking because there is no, uh, there is many study and no one shows better than the other. So Sluder suggests short bevel less nerve injury, but Rice and McMahon damaged by long bevel needle resolve quickly. So no one, and this is proved in the also isolated nerve injury. So no data about to prove a nerve ab above the nasal, but most of the time we use a blunt needle or just a, a small two needle because it's blunt and uh, you don't need at the time, all the time, you don't need to touch the nerve. So model used all the time, it is isolated nerve injury. So you can't give a conclusion for human. Two he needle can give you a less uh, traumatic. All the time, no aim for the nerve injection, except in some study now running about the internal injection. Frequent nerve injection always happen without uh, nerve injury. And also, you know, no, no needle just a proof to be a more better than the other nerve. The most important to go to the target and to be near the nerve, not inside the nerve. What about the complication of nerve uh, catheter? <coughs> complication with placement. Sometimes you get a very uh, successful block, but you put a catheter not working. And also difficult to treat the catheter. You can put a block, but the catheter not uh, treated. No optimal spread. Sometimes you put the catheter, you try to inject, and uh, the spread is not optimal. So vascular puncture, it can be you put a catheter inside the vessel or inside even the spinal cord. And hematoma formation. And this is many, many uh, problem came with the catheter. So to avoid that for um, uh, abnormal movement, you make a suturing, some place better than another to fix. If, for example, if you make an infraclave more better than supraclave because you're moving the neck and it come out. Uh, tunneling fixations, they have a controversy, decrease the infection or not, or fixation. Adhesive blaster, sometimes you have a very good adhesive blaster, but the problem with removal was pain. Uh, 
sometimes if, when you just bring a catheter, it can be uh, cut, cut it or just make an, uh, uh, fragmentation inside the body. And uh, there is no difference between uh, simulated, non-simulated. But if you, if you have a catheter cut, don't make an MRI to search for the catheter because it can make a burning for the catheter. About, you know, that all the time we said that you can inject uh, 10 to 15 mL uh, for the space to put a catheter in either way. And this is study comparing non-injection 10 mL of dextrose injection through the, the needle and some not injections. They don't find a difference between the two. And this is not, a, uh, it may be a belief, so not more, more than evidence. What about catheter problem? It may be kinking, knotting, moving, and coming out, uh, cutting inside the body. Uh, and this has been real habit. And usually don't put more than four centimeters inside uh, or four, four to six centimeters inside. And uh, sometimes it needs a surgical removal if you, have, if you can't bring it in easily. So also it may be a catheter failure because I bought a block and make a block very successful. I bought a catheter in, in the same place and I inject, I don't have any result. It may be for, for, for many reasons, for uh, to get another pain away from the nerve. And also all the time, there is no difference in success between uh, sim simulating and non-simulating catheter. What about uh, vascular puncture and hematoma? It is a very common. Uh, but most of the time is stopped. Uh, uh, recent studies suggested ultrasound can help you to decrease the incidence in adverse puncture. But I have a case uh, two, three months ago. Some of our colleagues just entered inside the axillary artery and the general failure and make an erasm immediate in a few minutes and erasmal dilatation. Hematoma formation, which can lead to an abscess. Uh, some just say sleep in the catheter. If you have a hematoma, a minor hematoma, and it's stable with a catheter, and the catheter working, don't remove it. Uh, also, um, uh, about the, the, the catheter and the coagulation, uh, the rule that don't put a catheter on low anesthesia except when you have a normal coagulation. But this is not a re real all the time. You can do all that all the time. So if you put a catheter, don't put in the big effect of anticoagulant, and uh, you must make it by a, a senior one uh, to be away from the vessels uh, all the time if you need it. Uh, it, it can help to decrease the incidence of hematoma or infection. About some of the about some of the uh, uh, major organ uh, injury or other injury, pneumothorax. I have a case of pneumothorax that happened to me. I make a subclavicular plexus block, blind technique, 15 years ago. It done at 10 o'clock in the morning, and second day I was in ICU on, uh, on call, and the patient come arrested to me uh, second day uh, around six o'clock. All this time, it was successful block. It took all this time to make a change in pneumothorax. And when I put a needle in the chest, it's like a uh, tire, like a car tire, fss, make a fss, like this. And uh, it can happen in a tension pneumothorax. It was an easy case and the first time, but everything can happen. So if the patient cough during your block and get an anxiety, tachycardia, chest pain, or subcutaneous emphysema, you must know this patient may have a pneumothorax. It can be developed after six to 12 hours. It happened with me after more than 24 hours until the patient arrested. Uh, pneumothorax, most of the time, if you have a tension one, you need a chest tube, but to put a needle uh, to, to resolve the uh, pneumothorax until you get a chest tube is an emergency. Don't need to make an, uh, to wait for X-ray, but ultrasound can diagnose and have a, have a minute if, if you look by ultrasound and you, you lose what's called an, uh, 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 seashore appearance for the uh, lung and the movement. Uh, also, sound also all the time just decrease the incidence of pleural injury because you can see the rib and see the pleura. And this is a type of, uh, of uh, uh, pathology, but the most important tension in the for me. Hemidiaphragmatic block, it was happening 100% for after intraskaline. And I think I, I see that in uh, shoulder surgery uh, lecture presentation. Uh, but now with ultrasound can decrease the incidence. In some study, it is only 30% because ultrasound will decrease the dose, will get more success, will go to the target more than to inject a high volume 35, like 30, 40 before. Now we inject about 10 mil, 12 mil. Uh, some patient with hemodiaphragmatic uh, can just tell you about shortness of breath and desaturation. Uh, because the vital capacity usually decreases more than 25, but most of the patient can tolerate that. In some patient uh, 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 can tolerate that. It, ha it can happen even in intraskaline, supraclavicular, broke, infraclavicular. In many, many procedures around the chest, it can 
mechadiaphragmatic block balances if you get an, a phrenic nerve block. Horner syndrome is very important because this is a very irritating for the patient and very scary for the patient. And if you if you, you make injection near Triscarine or Sobraclife, you tell the patient that, you know, the management is conservative, but you must tell the patient before to happen. And it happened like in either congestion to this or an eyelid, meiosis, conjunctival hyper edema. Sometimes you have a uh, 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 laryngeal nerve to get an uh, hoarseness of voice and you feel like a lump in your uh, throat and you must inform the patient about that. And this is a typical, you know, actor in America and they have, looks like when I see him all the time, I think he have a Horner syndrome from left eyes, left eyes. So what about the infection complication? It happened. Uh, different incidents in different literature from zero to 13%. A local infection, zero to 3%. Uh, abscess formation, 0.02%. Bacterial colonization, it can happen up to 60% of the people, but usually don't make an, a, a very big problem, except especially if you remove the cast. And the infection complication can increase with, with patient with a special situation like trauma immunocompromised patient, if they put a catheter for a long time, more than 48 hours, male sex, we don't know, male just uh, all the time have a problem. And absent of antibiotic, uh, pre-existing, uh, the, the shocking thing about the pre, if your patient have infection in uh, a surgical site, you don't have an increase in incidence of risk. Uh, also, it, it happened with one dose uh, 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 antibiotic, you maybe need more doses. Uh, optimal duration of no, uh, not knowing to which time would happen. Non-surgical patient no, need more study because all the time we make a study for surgical patients. But if the patient need a block for catheter for any other disease without surgery, we don't study it. Repeated manual dose and refilling. This is most of the time if you don't make it in a perfect way, in a trial way, you can get and fix it more. A strict aseptic technique must be used all the time. <clears throat> and the, uh, the, the, the treatment is not as uh, uh, President uh, Trump said before that about the virus, you can take and drink an antiseptic. The, the, the management here to use an, an aseptic technique all the time uh, 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 and the antiseptic solution. Uh, there is a concern about chloroxidine, about the allergy, about the uh, arachnoiditis or make, making affecting nerve injury, but this is in Australia and New Zealand, but in other areas you can use it. The concentration even 1.1, use it in a direct nerve, you can make a problem to the nerve. Uh, Gowan not necessarily needed all the time because the study not shown that decrease the infection. Uh, tunneling and the bacterial filters, this is a controversy about bacterial filter to, to decrease or not. Small need, small need, it may be more bitter, but uh, this is a less visibility and ultrasound, and the antibiotic can help. So, what is the optimal dressing for the uh, 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 for uh, for the, for um, to decrease the infection? Unknown. This is the optimal unknown. But transparent, it may be a very good just to see what's behind, even to change every time to see if there is infection. And the study about the CVB, CV, central venous uh, pressure line shows that it can reduce warm and moist, uh, moist um, uh, uh, culture for and it increasing the antimicrobial load all the time. But they, they found that better dose goes, dry goes with transparent dressing, or do I have a called transparent was and goes very, very bad, it can be more bitter. So what is the controversy about the infection control? You know, ultrasound and risk of nosocomial infection, you can transfer infection from one to one by the probe, because all the time you must protect your probe and protect your patient. And you must clean your probe usually by soap and water. Don't put an alcohol on the probe because you know the rubber will be uh, distracted sooner from and the probe is out of the machine. Once needle uses in the skin, it is not intact now. There is a protective barrier from the skin, but if you put a needle inside, this is there is no barrier now. So you must put in my, your mind as this. And uh, possibility for probe uh, contamination from the blood and from to put in other patient. So put a sterile probe cover or to but non-touch non technique, you can clean your probe and put the probe, to put the sterile stuff and to put the probe away from your uh, 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 needle uh, trajectory. Local anesthesia techniques of toxicity, I speak, uh, I tell you a lecture about it, but this is a devastating complication affecting the uh, uh, central nervous system and cardiac. And inhibition, you give a local anesthesia and have cardiac or uh, uh, CNS manifestation, you must be a local anesthesia systemic toxicity until probe otherwise. And it is not related to the dose only. 
it does have a multifactorial, many, many factors, and increase the risk in some patients like uh, children and the elderly, a high ca cardiac output, the patient who have comorbidity, cardiac, renal, uh, or uh, metabolic syndrome, pregnancy, because the change would happen with pregnancy, and uh, uh, no expert use of ultrasound it can increase. If you are not expert, it can increase a complication and not ed educating. A, if you don't educate it and don't make a checklist like an, the labilot, you can just get it easily. And you know, the first case report was uh, use of intralipid. Uh, it was a 65 years old. And you know, all this uh, stuff, uh, which is published 2000, uh, 2006 about uh, the patient, which get an uh, sobrachylovicular block and uh, uh, get an uh, convulsion after 30 seconds and ventricular arrhythmia and the rest, and make an ACC, ACL uh, 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 advanced life support uh, protocol. And uh, the patient not return for 15 minutes until someone suggesting uh, was an, uh, uh, you know, in inspired by the work of Willenberg about the animals, and he suggests use an intralipid. And uh, this is the one sitting on the chair and was very happy and become like an, uh, a boss because he suggested that and it worked very good. So the lipid is not uh, necessary to be uh, dangerous, sometimes very beneficial. And uh, it is now is one of the uh, most important drug for resuscitation of this patient. But don't forget that any drug, any lipid soluble drug can be uh, treated with overdose by intralipid, like verabamil, borabinolol, uh, amitriptyline, lamotrogen, and how it can be used. And in, in, in resuscitation, just a few points about resuscitation, adrenaline don't have a very big role because it, he can return back spontaneous circulation, but it's very hazardous for many things like mechanism and increased oxygen consumption, decreased subendocardial perfusion, and pulmonary edema. So uh, vasopressin don't have a role. The main role for interlibid and uh, uh, the mechanism is uh, uh, for toxicity is not, it can't be explained by only the potassium channel because many effect just away from, uh, sorry, sodium channel, sorry. And the many effect will just go through mitochondria. So, but at the end, the uh, uh, interlibid have a look at a toxicity guideline now just how to treat, usually 1.5 mL uh, in two to three minutes, and infusion about 0.25, 0.5, and it can increase this dose. But to, to remember, this is a guidelines, and some people can increase the dose because the, this is done until, 10, uh, until a very high dose. This is a one over 10 from the dose used in animal. And the monitoring is very important because in some cases you need about four hours, six hours, even 12 hours in, in a high dependence unit. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, how can you decrease this uh, toxicity? You know, frequent aspiration is very important. To inject incriminate 3 mL by 3 mL and even send to suction. To make a test to those, to these are, but this is a controversy, you inject it to see. Uh, ultrasound guided needle placement and it's very useful for that. And all the time, if the cardiac arrest happened, the, uh, uh, the surgeon was a trial and sitting like this and keep calm and blame anesthesia. But all the time, uh, our, our study here in this field about the complication of anesthesia, uh, the problem we don't have evidence in everything. So uh, according to our study, marriage is the main reason behind the force. And the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence because most of the study is done in animal study and it was a very high dose. And I don't know how, why they chose this uh, specular dose. And even the complication happened in animal study was very high dose with interlipid. And uh, also, in a study done for nerve injuries, isolated nerve injury, which will not happen for, for, for what happened inside the body. And this is sometimes because the study is a very, very, uh, very difficult to, to be done because this is like an intubation, because it can live or not. And until this time, if you, if you read this, what's happened here in written the car, he said that the woman is the main cause of cardiac problem, but the uh, uh, smoking is innocent from uh, this, uh, from this, um, in, and not incriminated in that. Until we had the evidence, I can't believe this one because if we have an expert in that, but we need to have evidence just to to support our our practice by evidence. I know it is a, a, a I take a time and uh, time is squeezing me, and this is your message: vascular injury still happen. Ultrasound just to decrease the incidence. Uh, also, uh, look at assisted success still happen, but you can decrease the doses and increase the. Uh, uh, I put a guideline for management and it's a little bit very, very important about that. Training and the minimizing force for injection, it can uh, work for local assisted for the nerve injury. 
ultrasound guide helping us by training and by uh, what's called investment in the hospital to decrease the doses, to decrease the uh, problem, especially phrenic nerve, and to decrease the nerve uh, injury and vascular problem all the time, even the, with the blur. And uh, <clears throat> I just uh, I get this an astra brex adversary for neurological complication uh, because I found it beneficial for you. Patient specific how to decrease to contribute for nerve injury. It may be existing neurological disorder who don't have any evidence. Diabetes mellitus who don't have any evidence, but it's advisory. Extreme of body habitus, the obese one is more difficult because more difficult case. Male gender, and uh, I don't know why, but advanced age, uh, it may be uh, vulnerable to complication. Surgical factor, direct surgical trauma or stretch, combination or dressing or cast. Uh, tourniquet inflation, hematoma, or abscess formation. And you also know that uh, uh, blood around the nerve can make irritation for the nerve and can make inflammation. And proper in patient position, and it may be a risk. So at the end, if you have a right drug, right dose, right environment, and be prepared for everything, because it's a block is like an uh, um, operation, and right patient, and right physician, which is trained, skilled, and being intervention, original anesthesia. Uh, uh, also write assistant because one of the complications which happened for nerve injury because of assistant, he injected 10 mil without telling the, the doctors, without telling and injected inside the, the uh, uh, popliteal nerve. And also the, the problem again is that there was a telling you don't see the nervous swelling and if you have a right equipment. And uh, I hope our lecture to, to go to the target, not to be like an, uh, this one in uh, 2020 about within. Uh, Thomas, do you take Helen to be your wife? If he is, Please press enter. If no, please escape. And I hope, inshallah, next year uh, to be an, um, away from the COVID because it's a, a very, very strain coming to our surface. So start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Thank you very much for listening and uh, sorry for uh, uh, taking more time. Because now. Thank you very much, Dr. Yasser, for a nice presentation. It was a very classy and um, a thorough presentation. Uh, we have um, uh, three questions uh, for you, one from my side and two from the audience. I will start with the audience, um, actually three now. So um, uh, uh, the first question is, what's your experience in epidural morphine? Uh, you know that uh, in epidural morphine, uh, uh, we use it many, many years in Egypt, uh, but uh, all the time is written as uh, uh, preservative free morphine, every morphine. Uh, but usually we use a non preservative free morphine. Uh, the problem with that uh, practice, we don't have another drug. And uh, in many times, I get the patient was an, um, it, it can work, it works more many times, but it can, the most distressing symptom I found is this one the itching. And we get a patient for ICU because of itching. And I remember it was Dr. Khaled Hamid, uh, our colleague, our professor. And it, he sees this patient who's like a monkey. He tell me that like a monkey because the patient is itching. So uh, we don't prefer, but in, in Saudi Arabia, I use uh, ibuprofen. Uh, uh, I, I don't found this problem really because I don't you know, see thousands of cases like in Egypt, but it can be used. This drug, it can be used. But there is um, most of the time the, the teacher supporting more like fentanyl fusion or stuff like this. All right, the second question is, uh, can you please explain more about the catheter and um, coagulation, I assume the anticoagulation and catheter, yeah, catheter insertion? Yeah, you know that as I told you, there is no consensus, uh, what's called evidence about uh, the catheter, but this is advisory from ASRA, like advice from ASRA, uh, to, to don't put a catheter in the top of anticoagulant. For example, if you put for Clexan uh, as a um, uh, prophylactic dose, put it after 12 hours. And when you remove it, don't remove it in the top of, of, uh, um, uh, of the pharmacological effect of the drug. Second thing to be done by expert, because it's very important. You know, catheter to be done by expert, and uh, you can tell me how can I be expert, and I don't make a catheter. When you become an expert, you put a catheter. And you can put a catheter in low risk patient first. And the third, third thing, and don't remove the catheter in the big effect of the, uh, 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 the effect of the drugs. And I can tell you there is no consensus about increase the, increase the bleeding or not, because I found a study about even antiplatelet, uh, don't increase the incidence, but still the advisory. Yeah, and my question to you is about the thrombocytopenia and the uh, 
uh, neuroaxial and peripheral blocks, it's hard yes. to find a consensus about certain number uh, that you um, you have to stick to it. So in your yes. own experience, what's the lowest number of platelet you would uh, do neuroaxial? And what's the lowest platelet number you would accept for a peripheral block? And have you ever seen um, a complication epidural um, uh, epidural hematoma that needed to be evacuated and caused any uh, uh, troubles to the patient, called equina, for example. Uh, you know that I tell you something about from 2013 to 2014 in America, there is a, a, about 38, uh, sorry, 49 cases of epidural hematoma. And when the meta wrote analysis for these cases, they found less than 40% was an anticoagulant. And most of the other patient was not an anticoagulant and don't take an anticoagulant. And some of the patient, even spontaneous epidural hematoma of two cases happened without any, any, any intervention. So really, we don't have a number. There is an, a conflict about the number. For me, I make an epidural, I make an epidural until 80, 70. Uh, if the patient, you know, and this is according to the patient, if I find a patient easy, uh, well, skinny patient, but difficult to have a problem in the back, I can do it, especially if I have another option. Because most of the time you look, you look for the, um, the patient, the selected patient from two sides. So for me, uh, for me, I make a spinal until 60 because it uh, high, was highly needed in the patient. And the patient was skinny and I bought a small needle and one break and nothing happened. And for me, I never see an uh, epidural hematoma, but I read about it and you must know everything about it because devastating complication. I don't speak about the incidents. But, um, uh, 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 you know, there is a very interesting study, a radiological study about the epidural hematoma. Uh, they make an uh, epidural and they take the patient after two hours, four hours by MRI to see if there is any collection. Hematoma, what's called epidural hematoma means a collection of blood in the epidural space. You know how much is they found, the incidence? Can you imagine? 20, 28%, about one third of the patient, get an epidural hematoma by radiology. But the clinically manifested one, which not stopped, uh, it is an, this is high incidence, about one over uh, 180,000 or 60,000 or whatever. So for me, I, this is experience and do not follow it because yeah. it's different from place to place and different, depending on the experience of the one for, for, for a trainee or just a junior one, don't to go for a difficult patient and say that yesterday I said about 70 or 60. And it found difficult to put a needle many times and you get an epidural hematoma. So it needs an expertise, expertise one. And you don't have other option, and this is the best option for the patient. And for me, I make a spinal and 60, uh, and the epidural, I never go below and uh, 80. Yeah, and this is the final question from the audience. There's a talk about use of insulin in LAST. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, I'm not sure about what LAST uh, abbreviation is. Insulin? Uh, yeah. Insulin, yeah, that's actually there in the, uh, yeah, probably, really? yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know it. I don't know about it. Just I read about the what's uh, the stuff has evidence. It may be many mm -hmm. drugs, many things to use, like to be an era, but we need an randomized control. So I don't know about it. I don't read about it and I don't really know anything about it. Thank you very much. Appreciating uh, uh, all your time and effort. And uh, thanks for Thank all you. the panel who um, gave us their experience tonight and shared us uh, their uh, uh, wisdom and pearls. Thank you very much.